This video is sponsored by Incogni. We've been in the process of buying out a 54-year-old hobby shop. The last trip to see Hobby Shop Ron, we got everything in this stack right here for $8,000. We filled my minivan floor to ceiling with high-end knives, high-end treasure hunt Hot Wheels, and so much more. The majority of these boxes we have not even seen inside. It was mostly just packing it up and moving on with our day. So today, we're gonna unpack everything, find the 25 best items, 25 most valuable items. The goal is to get at least 2,500 in value for those items. We're gonna find the most interesting items, the weirdest items, the craziest items, and trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around. This is by far our most popular series because the items in here are legendary. Official US mail knife. I don't know if he was trying to get 800 for this whole lot. All right, what did you just buy? Value at $15,000. Hobby Shop Ron has become the most popular person on our channel because he is an icon, a reselling legend. We've given him tens of thousands of dollars in the buyout process. This is our most recent journey. And the majority of these items came from a safe that he forgot about that was under the stairs in his basement. Yeah, he found more. Oh my God. <laughs> I forgot I had another safe in the basement. It had under the stairs, a big safe. What? What's in that? Is that the knives, knife? knives, knives. Oh my good knives, I couldn't, I thought you were gonna... <laughs> Hundreds of knives, hundreds, maybe thousands of Hot Wheels, so much more in these boxes. Books, glassware, Trains, planes, automobiles, you name it, we probably got it in here. Every time we've been through our previous buys, we have found items worth over $1,000. We found crazy, weird, unique items, and people have gone nuts for this series because it's just, it's insane. It's once in a lifetime. Another goal of ours, since the items are in the shed, we want to transfer them all to plastic bins with lids and get them nicely labeled so we know exactly what we have instead of having a monstrosity of we have no idea what we have. So it's gonna look really nice at the end. Now, El Pal was not with us when we picked everything up and hasn't seen things, but I'll, I'll fill you in, El Pal. So right. a lot of the buy was books, which honestly, me and Sky Guy weren't really that excited about, but Ron wanted us to take them and we pretty much just say yes if he wants us to take stuff. I know there's books in this box, uh, but we got Hot Wheels here. So I wanna start by looking up like the sealed case of Hot Wheels, maybe look up these books. Um, see if we have any actual value in the books, and then we'll go from there. Well, these books say that they're $700. $700? So... I feel like I did notice that when we were there, but if we've learned anything from the prices on stuff with Ron, it's usually between one third yeah. and two thirds of that in reality. Even if it's worth $200, that would be awesome though. I mean, these are Lewis and Clark. Have we found any books yet from Ron that were actually worth anything? No. These I'm intrigued by, because it is a Lewis and Clark set. It looks like it's probably a complete set. So there are two comps on eBay, 400 and 500 bucks. Listed? No, sold. Sold? Serious. Well, there's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. We're going for average value of $100 for 25 items. That's gonna <laughs> that's gonna make the cut. Sweet, so we'll, we'll call it safely $400 value right here already. That's definitely a, a great start. As long as it's a complete set. How many are supposed to be there? Uh, eight, three, five, six, four, one, seven, two, and eight. And eight, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. We've said it before, but for those that don't know, on the eBay mobile app, you can filter, go to the settings, and lock in your settings. So if you wanna lock in sold listings, completed listings, hit that little lock button after you go to sold and it'll be locked when you look up everything else in the future. It makes it a lot faster and easier. But before we get into some of the next items, I do want to say that it takes a lot of effort to find information on some of this rare hobby shop stuff. Because of that, I have many different accounts across the internet to help research stuff. And not only that, I also have tons of accounts to buy stuff for my business. So I've got my fair share of data online, just like you. And for me, not only data about, you know, trains or games that I've sold or bought, but also personal data. But companies and data brokers can keep and even sell my information online without me knowing. And they're doing it to you too. Companies and data brokers can hold home address, phone number, date of birth, social security number, email information, information gender, all without telling you. But with Incogni, they work on your behalf to remove this information from these data brokers. Each broker that holds your information is another chance that your data could be breached. This could open you up to identity theft 
where you could have someone take out a loan under your name. You know those loyalty programs or newsletters that you can sign up for? When you give them your email or phone number, boom. Your data can be passed to a broker who then sold it to a company and now you get tons of spam calls and emails. So protect your privacy in three easy steps. One, make an account and tell them who you are. Two, Grant them the right to work on your behalf. Then they'll request that your information be removed from data brokers, something that you cannot do easily on your own. Three, sit back and watch Incogni do its thing. I was honestly shocked when I found out that I have information being stored by 112 brokers. But I was pleased when I found out that within minutes, Incogni requested that my information be removed from all of them, even removing one. The first 100 people to use code Caterpie, C-A, TRP using the link in the description below will get 20% off of Incogni. Definitely consider joining to support us, but also to protect yourself and your business. But now, let's get back to some insane finds. All right, Alpal has become a train connoisseur with all the trains we've had to sell. Just found a heavy locomotive. It's old. Is it Lionel? American Flyer. American Flyer Lines, okay. Which technically is made by Lionel, I believe, so. I think you're right. And what are we looking at here? One went for 95 on bid. Shoot. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, one went for 95 for parts only. 95 for parts. So. And this looks very clean here. Yeah, I mean, it looks in pretty good shape. I would safely call that 100 bucks then. I think so. If it was 95 on bid for parts, this looks all good. Most of the trains that we've sold, buyers have been thrilled with. Call it 100 bucks. Just pulled out this box sealed case of Hot Wheels. It has four cases of 36 cars within. Alpal looked it up. Yeah, so I can't find anything exactly with the same number, but it's probably easy hundred bucks per, which we have how many in here? Yeah, there's Six, four of those four and there's 36 cars per box. They are sealed. Uh, we'll put a screenshot of what he's seeing. L2593 you can find, but you can't find these ending numbers. We don't know much about Hot Wheels, especially in sealed cases. We don't want to open them up because I'm sure collectors like them like this. But it seems like we probably have a good find here. More on Hot Wheels. So just looked up a Hot Wheels from this box. It's retiring. Kenworth. I scanned the barcode and the entire line comes up, but I did find this one had sold for $13. Um, other than that, like, I think these are just going to be tough to find. I mean, we might have a complete set here, like last production run set, because it seems to be all from the same line. And then there's these random mash boxes and Hot Wheels there. We might have to get in an expert at some point to help us out. Now, Hot Wheels may prove to be tough for us to look up today. I think we're gonna plan on in the future getting somebody to go through them. But this one's a treasure hunt. A lot of the treasure hunts are marked. I've discovered that the treasure hunts from the 90s, especially 1995, are the ones to look for, but also super treasure hunts. So I found a super treasure hunt from this era on uh, eBay sold, went for $89 on bid, where this one went for $3.50. Pretty similar car. The super treasure hunt was marked on the actual body of the car and not on the package. So that might be how to tell. Let us know if you know in the comments, but uh, I think we're just gonna make a giant pile of Hot Wheels for a future day and we'll move on to the other glorious items. That is a camera, I think. Yeah. Kodak? Yeah. So that was buried in the box book that Al Pell just pulled out here. Good night, this thing is ancient. Picture history portfolio. All of these, a box of photography books. Well, I had a good feeling about this book, but unfortunately, one went for $7 and one went for $20. So not that great, especially considering how massive it is. We're gonna break our plastic bins down into three different categories. I'll show you what we got working here. We've got high-end eBay. These are gonna be the things that we get to first. Some of you may remember these clocks, at least a hundred bucks a piece, so we put those there. We've got eBay, just like regular eBay, things to get to eventually. And then there's unprocessed, things that we're not looking up. We don't know if they're worth, list, worth listing on eBay. So those are gonna go in these bins here. I wanna make it foolproof. So somebody can come in here, look at these bins and know what they need to do next. Hopefully Alpal can just come out here and know what he needs to do with any of these bins. That's my goal. We can get there. Just got to the first box of knives and Alpal pulled out this monstrosity. And it says it's an official US mail knife. Property of Wells Fargo. That is fascinating. That is heavy too. Good night. This crazy tomahawk hatchet thing. And check these out. Puffy stickers featuring Michael Jackson. <laughs> what in the world is this? You just never know what you're gonna find in these things. So other than this knife and this hatchet, which is about 35 bucks, um, is just knife cases. So hopefully we can go through the boxes over there 
and find the knives that are with these cases. Well, Ron is an endless encyclopedia of knowledge, and we're starting to discover just how he may have discovered all that knowledge. He has price guides from matchboxes, railroad collectibles, radio collectibles, fishing lure collectibles, all sorts of different categories. I used to memorize baseball card guides as a kid. I still have that information logged up in my head. All the key cards from every set, I've got them all. And Ron just had a much bigger mind than I did. What do we got? It says yo-yos on the box. It's probably a piano or some sort. You know, yo-yo ma. Huh? Ah, yes. Oh, there's Dang. There's games, brother. There's the DS light right there. Is that in there? <laughs> That's in there. <laughs> Let's go. Legit surprise right now. Uh, oh, no. Cleaning kit for like a Game Boy. Do we have any other games? He did mention there would be game systems in one of them. Oh man, please be a nomad. Or is it a game gear? Feels like there's something in here. It's heavy. There's a game, game gear in gear. here. We have so many game gears from the Game Barn buyout. Let's that, that one looks clean though. Yeah. All right, well we found more games. <laughs> That's how our relationship started with Rob. And then there's a bunch of new in package yo-yos who knows if they're if they're right. good at all but hey they could be new in package is always oh, yeah, a good thing sweet yeah i think that case alone is like 20 bucks so that's sweet. we'll set those to the side we know how to sell those yeah <laughs> definitely some decent value to these things like 15 bucks like for this guy there's a couple of them but then we just got like you know a bunch of a bunch of them yo mega they're probably 15 20 bucks per and we got about 15 of them in here so 200 dollar box I mean, why not, right? You just you just never know what you're going to find. And, like, we might keep this as a lot just to get a quick $200 sale instead of waiting to get $300 over the next six months. But we'll still probably check because I did see one that went for $250. It was a special edition of the Fireball. I just realized the knife we've been using to cut open boxes is a Franklin Mint knife. <laughs> so, I guess we'll look it up to see. I mean, you found sweet. it in one of the boxes, right? Yeah, I just yeah. found it right in my We didn't have a knife, so we, we knew where to look. The yo yo with a brain. Anybody remember these? About $20 knife right here, so. We'll keep using I'm it. Shake your head. <laughs> we still got a lot to go, guys. This entire shelf, plus the stuff stacked in front of it, is from our last load. Oh, that shelf, too? Besides the game stuff, there's a couple game bins, but yeah. Everything up there, right here. Sheesh. <laughs> got a long ways to go. We found some good stuff though. This has been a solid start. Another book of boxes. Another box of books. <laughs> Not a book of boxes. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of books. <laughs> That's the second, second time that one's fell. Good night. Um, no idea, guys. No idea. These can be tough to find because there's different prints. These are all definitely old. Interesting. There's an old Tom Sawyer book. We might want to check that one. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of research and time to process through these, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do. Tom Sawyer's like 10 bucks. If every book in here is 10 bucks, you know, might have a couple hundred bucks, but we're just gonna move it over to unprocessed, get it out of cardboard so that they stay in good shape, and we'll deal with it later. Well, these boxes are actually really cool, so Apple just discovered these Wizard of Oz books. Really cool, like color and artwork on them, I think. We can get about 60 bucks for the set. Just grabbed another box and right on top is this little thing full of trinkets, like a kind of a junk drawer lot. And I saw something in here with an $800 sticker. What? I don't know if he's trying to get 800 for this whole lot. If there were any stones in these, they're like removed. It's, it says Sky Pilot, near mint, rare. I have no idea. But if Ron was asking 800 bucks, that usually means, you know, it, it's at least something, probably at least a couple hundred, but it says flying arrow. There's four of them here. Very interesting rings. They're not gold or silver. I bet you they had stones that were something at some point. Oh man, yellow fury flying arrow. Yeah, it says yellow fury on the other. <laughs> Come on, Ron. $800. $800. <laughs> hey, as a lot, we might have 30 bucks here. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know with his pricing he was uh, you know he, he never priced off of the internet he was in business for 54 years up until 2017 had all these price guides and head knowledge and really only knew or cared about the local market it's a completely different ball game i doubt he would have ever gotten 800 for these he might have gotten 100 they're interesting they look cool i bet that we could get more than five dollars for this one because that went on bid 
but we can't get $800. On to the next thing. The birds are everywhere. I hope you cannot hear them. Um, I'm gonna add the DS light to our stack, so so we're adding that to our urgent cell pile. We just found something limited to a hundred. 50th anniversary high low, 85 out of a hundred. It was in this styrofoam insert here. It's like quality, but not super quality. Yeah. But there's not super fine details or anything on this. Though limited to a hundred is pretty legit. This box just keeps on giving. So these are like really vintage like buttons. I mean, that looks 60s. Green Hornet, super old button. Batman. I don't know if he's asking 100 or $1, <laughs> but it says calling Batman. It's in a little like coin protector. Oh. So a bunch of Marvel Magnets, Thor, Captain America, Spider-Man, Batman, Robin. So DC and Marvel, that's, I mean, those are cool. Well, I just found those magnets and I'm pretty thrilled. I'm gonna put a screenshot up. This Spider-Man right here, there's one that went for $130 in September. Just this one. Somebody listed all of the Spider-Mans um, the day before Halloween for $30 a pop and somebody cleared them out. So they probably listed them way too low since this one did sell for $130. We have two Spider-Mans. We've got Captain America, Thor, Batman, and Robin. I'm gonna say we've gotta have probably, with the buttons, easily $400 in this little case right here. This is why going through this hobby shop is so much fun, because you just find the most random, insanely rare stuff. These magnets are from the 70s, the buttons are from the 60s. When it's old and interesting, people tend to want it. So $400, adding that to the pot. Here I just found a full thing of crazy looking arrowheads. They look amazing. Let me know if you know what I should look for in these. I guess we could reference the old uh, guide that Ron had, but uh, yeah, just comment down below if you see anything interesting in here or any tips on what to look for. But we have no idea what's inside. Oh, of course, it's oh, Hot, Hot Wheels. Wheels. I don't know whether to be excited or disappointed at this point. So far, the, like, the other stuff is so interesting. Matchbox stockings? Stocking vehicles. If you don't know That's what you're That's awesome, getting. mystery vehicle. That could be interesting. What well, a, oh. ooh, 1997. See, this is the year we would want like treasure hunts from. Oh, there's a Star Wars. Like more. Some bigger, some bigger ones. You never know. Two times turbo power. Does it think that was it? Die cast. Who knows? We'll set it off to the side. If this isn't worth money, I. Is that the only thing in here? There's two of those. Oh my gosh! That one's even crazy. Look at these things. All right. Let's see if we can. Let's get a good look. I think this is a lamp. Doesn't it look that way? Kind of does, but I don't think it is. No markings or anything on them? Probably oh. not. They're so old. Dang, yeah. What do you guys think they're worth? Comment down below. <laughs> All right, what did you just find? This is, is, this is a note that was inside the vase. It says Ming Dynasty, 17th century, value at $15,000. There's three zeros on that? 15 grand. Oh my gosh. Value at $15,000 in 1979, signed by George Truder. What is that? I can't quite True, tell. Yeah, Trudis, <laughs> Truder. Sweet mercy. Well, George thought it was worth $15,000 in 1979. With inflation, That's put, that puts this thing at $38,000. Probably more than that. <laughs> we just hit the holy grail. <laughs> We're laughing because we've seen stuff like this and we haven't found much merit to it in the past. But if this actually is Ming Dynasty, good night. That is That would just be... I mean, they look beautiful. They're old, definitely. They have crazy design. We don't see, like, any markings or anything. So, Antiques Roadshow, here we come. He just found another one. Look at this. Yeah, this is crazy, man. Is there a note inside of this one? You want to shine your flashlight down here? No markings on the bottom? No. Well, I think it's. Like, it looks like... Yeah, it is a marking, but... Oh, yeah. It is something. This is a... I mean, I feel like th this has to be worth a lot. I, I don't know, but this is insane. Kind of looks hand-painted. Wow. This is a Bible from 1860. Ooh, that is cool. Ooh, we got a duck decoy. That looks like a nice one, honestly. 
This one actually has a marking. We've been waiting for that. So it says, Alpal, it says, um, almost was like W Wheatley, but Wheatley, oh, like an 81 is on there. It's kind of scratched in, but we've sold a, a lot of like six of these before, but they were kind of junky ones for like 200 bucks that we got from Ron. Yeah, W-H-E-A-T-L-E-Y. It does look like W-W or W Wheatley. Yeah, it does. I'll just stick with Wheatley for now, but because I can't quite tell if there's anything in front of that W. There's nothing with Wheatley Duck. No. Dang. It could have just been a local toy. person. I mean, it looks sweet. Yeah, that one's got to have value. Let's call it worth 100 bucks and add it to our list immediately. <laughs> All right, you got to grab those for sure. Now, I don't know if we have an orange tip to that, but it's a cap. Cap gun by Mattel and then a Fleischmann train set. I know we saw a single Fleischmann train locomotive for like... A lot. 80 90 bucks i think yeah these are the two items that i grabbed from the man cave which we will be buying fully in the future but i got a really good feeling about both of these so similar locomotive this went for 50 bucks by itself the whole set we looked up fleischman 351 can't find anything it's got to be a couple hundred bucks no problem like in this condition so we're gonna call it 200 bucks we'll add it to the pile Hopefully we can find more information later. And then this, you should check out. This is a Mattel Fanner-50, and it does have the original holster, the uh, original like ammo, and the original box, which I'm pretty sure is quite rare. So this, in this condition, is elusive, rare, crazy. We would not take less than 300 bucks. So between these two items, we're adding $500. This is going extremely well so far. We just found a box that has a knife from World War I, 1899. I looked it up, it's US, it has 1899 right on it. 150 bucks, even in fair condition, which this one I would say is. Phenomenal find right there. These other ones look like they're similar uh, in age. But we're definitely gonna add this one to the pot and there's some sort of these tokens, these coins, coins, buttons. These are pins, buttons. These are little Wait. like metal. Oh my goodness. Troops. Holy cow, like... dude. This is a whole collection. 1896. There's like. Ooh, baby. Look at these. There's only like metal 1950. Oh man, this is a box right here. These are so cool. <laughs> Is it a recipe? Pancake flour on the bottom. Buttons Can't and stuff for, re... this one says patrolman. School safety patrol. Like a super old badge or whatever. So all those knives, be... these crazy things. There's a reason this stuff was in a safe. Under his stairs. That says 1925 on it. Oh, Don't show that, Sky Guy. I I found this thing. It's a Marks brand, Oak Park. 50 bucks on bid, we'll add that to the pile. All right, hit that like button if you made it this far. This is the most fun that I've had going through any of the batches of stuff. There's been a ridiculous amount of amazing items. It's been a blast. I don't know, Alpel, we've been through a lot of this stuff together. What do you think? Yeah, it's, I mean, everything is like super cool. There's no stuff that's like, oh, that's... Everything's um, been yeah. like, whoa, like we've only gotten through a, a few boxes because we're looking so close. Yeah. We do want to find some really nice knife items, so that's next on the agenda. I want to pull this out and look closer at that Spider-Man cell, see what it's worth. Um, there might be some knife boxes up here. That was just gonna like that one feels pretty are. heavy. Yeah. So we'll we'll find some crazy knives and then look at the Spider-Man cell. Just found a box full of boxed fishing lures. We love this stuff. That's Hedden. That's Fluger. Those are some of the main brands to look for. I'm sure there's some serious value in this box. Well, I can't find these two specifically. I got a good feeling about them. This one's about 30 bucks, but Alpal just discovered a knife. That thing is oh, that's insane. Annoying. Yeah, look at that monstrosity. I would say easy 150. 150 bucks, what's the details on it? It is Case. It's Case, yeah. Case brand, boom. This is like it. Sweet, 150 bucks. All right, well this was a nice little honey hole of a bin because that knife right there, another Case knife worth 170. And this one I have the display case for, we finally found its match. And that one is about 150. You gotta love the knives. They add it oh, fast, wow. man. <laughs> this thing is sweet. There's only one other one that I can find of this brand. Cyrilitho. It's an animation cell out of a thousand. 
This one's got the original box. $175 is what the other one went for, for just without the box. This one has the box, COA, and that. I'm gonna call it 200 bucks. I wouldn't take a penny less for it. That thing is insane. Add it to the pile. Just looked up another knife. It's a buck knife, another good brand to look for. This is 1989 Club Knife, one of 1,700. $145 on bid is what another one went for. We'll call it 150, because usually, if you don't sell it on bid, you can get more. Great find right there, and this is a beautiful box of knives. These knives are gonna have a serious, serious average sales price value. Now this is a glorious box that I did not see while there at all. You got Star Wars and TMNT. Ooh, baby, look at that. That is cool. So two of those, you gotta love the 90s glory. Honestly, might be sending this stuff to Retro Rick because he's asking me if I find sealed 90s toy for his store. He's adding a big old toy section. He's already got it added. So if you're in Arkansas, check out his store. Rick, these might be coming your way, my friend. And there's actually a Palpatine mail away from like the 80s in here. I'll screenshot it. It goes for about 70 bucks. So we'll add that to the stack. That's an easy listing and a great little find. Well, just found a $350 knife, a case Kodiak Hunter. That is beautiful. And Alpal has found five other knives here, ranging from 50 to 150 in value. And another Kodiak Hunter knife coming in at $200. All right, we have finished 25 items we found. The goal was $2,500 in value. What actually happened was $4,265 added up in the 25 items that we found in two and a half hours of searching. We had a blast. We found some crazy stuff. We found some stuff that wasn't worth anything. A lot of that stuff over there, but this was a really good batch of stuff. I paid eight grand for it. I think it's gonna turn out really well since we barely have scratched the surface. Three unprocessed bins on the left. That's list on eBay. That's super high end list on eBay like yesterday. So you're gonna take that one inside right after this. <laughs> <laughs> All of this we still have to go through. So there's stuff. Stacked up here and up on these top shelves that we have not touched. So subscribe for more. We're going to be doing many more hobby shop videos, going through the stuff, buying more stuff from Ron. The man cave still has to be purchased. If you like it, you got to hang with us. We'll see you guys next time. Bar'll do. Once again, thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. And remember to use my link to get 20% off.